Hello everyone, I'm uh, Professor Philip Chu from Chinese University of Hong Kong. It is my great honor to join uh, Tokyo Life uh, 2021. And uh, I'm really honored to co-chair this session with uh, Professor Fujisuro. And uh, today we have a renowned speaker, uh, both uh, from Japan, and uh, they are actually long time good friend. And I learned mm -hmm. a lot from them, both of them. and. Uh, the, let me introduce the, the first speaker, who is uh, Professor uh, Taguchi Gotoda. Professor Gotoda graduated from Tokyo Medical University in 1992, and uh, he then started his residency in GI oncology from 1995 and become the chief of endoscopy division of National Cancer Center Hospital uh, from 2006. And he received a lot of awards and serving as a support member on a lot of uh, journals, a renowned journal and also Council of the Japanese Gastric Cancer Association and uh, other renowned um, association. He was uh, selected uh, as a fellow of uh, ASG in 2012, ACG in 2015, and also uh, LCA in 2015. So uh, in starting from 2020, he is serving as the Dean of Nihon University School of Medicine. And he has a, a lot of uh, propagation, more than 280. So everyone knows uh, Professor Kotoda as a renowned and pioneer in ESD. And today uh, we have uh, Professor Kotoda to tell us about safe and reliable ESD for everyone. Professor Kotoda, please. Yes, thank you very much, Professor Philip Chu. I'm very happy to join this meeting with uh, Philip Chu and uh, Mitsuhiro Fujishiro, uh, such a very famous endoscopist. And I deeply appreciate the Professor Inoue to give this special opportunity at the Tokyo Live 2021. And uh, I wanted to have this presentation face to face. However, unfortunately, COVID-19 crisis is still continuing in the world. So today, my topic is safe and reliable ESD for everyone as a minor part of Professor Ono's presentation. Okay, I would like to share the, my presentation. Okay, as all know, the ESD is not an easy procedure because the full procedure must be done by one uh, device, one device through the accessory channel, meaning the hanging on during the procedure makes us stressful. Then often cause bleeding and the perforation. Of course, bleeding and the perforation are now well controlled endoscopically, but it is safely and completely managed by experienced doctor, like Dr. Ono. The please image when we eat meat. Everybody use the fork and the knife, even tiger holds the meat with his, her one hand. So why should we not use any hands other than endoscope? That it may be traction during the ESD. Our data, including the Dr. Ono and me showed that the traction assisted ESD reduce, reduces the risk of perforation, especially when Early gastric cancer is located in the, uh, on, on the greater curve of the corpse. The procedure time <clears throat> is much shorter than the traction assisted group rather than the non tracted group, traction group. So now, traction assisted ESD is standard way and relieves stress and fear from the risks such as the severe breathing and the perforation. So our group also um, validated that the, validated the effect of the traction assist during the esophageal ESD. Traction assist has significantly reduced procedure time regardless tumor size and the tumor spreading like this. So now 
as I said before, the traction is now a very, very useful technique to uh, ES, uh, gastric and esophageal EST wear and completely. So I would like to talk about the ESC devices. I know Dr. Ono loves IT knife. Of course, I like it and uh, generally use it on my ESD. However, I get older, so I want to avoid encountering severe breathing and perforation. Therefore, I select to often use the scissors type device like uh, <coughs> crutch cutter or SB knife. These are extremely capable in the nature world. Actually, taking advantage of wonders of nature, we are now in, in, uh, inventing a uh, crab shaped endoscope robot like this. Above all, these are the gentra and the knife and the needle. During the laparoscopic surgery, Traction and the scissors are the essential tool for <clears throat> uh, safe and uh, complete procedures. Maybe this uh, special technique are well known by the Professor Philip Chu. So, why not use scissors in ESD? I think the scissor type device do not require the experience or a special skill. So I'd like to show the two videos. The first is the traction assisted gastric ESD with IT knives for region located in the greater curve of the upper corpse. <clears throat> so now I'm cutting the mucosa, but uh, we encounter the severe breathing. Of course, the such kind of breathing can be controlled endoscopically, however, uh, pouring the water and uh, uh, best, uh, brought uh, interfere the precise procedure. And sometimes the uh, some mucosa layer cannot be uh, where, uh, where cannot well uh, uh, observed. After the complete mucosa cutting, I would like to use the traction method with the dental floss. Clip with, with dental floss attached on the distal side. And then pick up the this tissue and the submucosal area is well uh, recognized like this. After that, I gave up, uh, gave up to use the IT knife because the uh, severe breathing, so I gently and safely dissect the uh, mucosa area with a needle type device. So anyway, the needle type or IT knife looks complicated and the less controlled breathing by, especially by the non-experienced doctor. Of course, that this locate, such kind of location is easily carried out by the Dr. Ono, but he has a very good skill. So uh, same ESD is maybe impossible by no experienced doctor. So I would like to introduce the uh, scissor type device for safe gastric ESD. The location is the same. And the full procedure can be done by the uh, straight view. That is easily understand for the non-experienced doctor. The procedure looks like not so fast, but it looks like very safe, like a biopsy and the rest breathing. So the, I think the procedure time of the uh, ESD with the scissor is almost same or 
uh, I think that maybe the less than the classic ESD with IT or needle type when the region located in the greater curvature of the upper corpse. I think that this procedure seems very safe. No bleeding, because a clutch cutter can control the small vessel, then prevent the severe bleeding. And this is a step-by-step -step procedure, like a surgery. Blinded to cut or blinded to dissection is not so many. Just a clutch the tissue and then cut the tissue. After the complete uh, mucosal cutting, I would like to use the, also the traction method to make the uh, traction part. I would like to cut the little bit the submucosal layer. During the submucosal dissection, the chance of the bleeding may be the less. Okay, the step of the uh, traction method is almost the same as before. So the traction make us the good visi vis uh, visibility. When we find the vessel, maybe that we can coagulate fast by the clutch cutter. Now that it is almost done, and we can see the vessel, and then uh, grasp the tissue, and then coagulate, and then dissect the, this submucosal uh, tissue. I think that this procedure seems very safe, and maybe the re uh, reasonable for the non-experienced doctor. Okay, surface of the defect area, it looks like a very uh, smooth. So, uh, I, I think that many endoscopists are not Dr. Ono. So, for ordinary endoscopists, including myself, I would like to propose to use the traction ESD with scissors type devices. I think this is the uh, at least a standard procedure for non-experienced doctor or endoscopist for the country with the less number of the gastric or esophageal ESDs. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gotota. In the really enlightening lecture, especially I would say it is a enhanced ESD uh, that uh, we not only dissecting uh, with uh, the knife and the scope, but uh, also like a surgeon, you uh, added uh, more uh, hand so that you can uh, have a more degree of freedom uh, introducing the retraction and also the scissor type uh, the ESD device is uh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd like to uh, first uh, ask a bit about um, the uh, traction uh, uh, method. So. Do you think that uh, this traction method can be applied to all location uh, in the stomach or even outside the stomach in other, like esophagus or the, or the colon? Uh, okay, thank you very much. That's a very important question. And uh, in my case, or well, in my institution, all ESD, including the colon, is achieved by the traction method. But the dental flows is maybe the uh, complicated to uh, put on the tissue. So, you know, the um, SO ring or other tra traction method used in the colon. But the asparagus and the stomach is may maybe the, uh, much better to use uh, dental floss because that is very cheap and easy to make up. And uh... Uh, the second uh, question I'd like to ask, especially for the uh, startup trainee uh, about ESD, is that uh, 
So the when you put in the uh, traction of the clip and the uh, dental flows, you would you always put at the uh, anal side of the specimen and then the retreat back, and then you do a ritual fraction, or you put in from the oral side? Yes, that is also the very important question. The, when the region is located in the asparagus, maybe the traction should be put on the uh, oral side. But region for the stomach, the best position is not so clear. I, in, my case, in my experience, the traction should be put on the distal side. Then our procedure carried out by the little flex, flex position. But I think that maybe the doctor will not write the traction locate, uh, put on the oral side. So I, I don't know, and uh, I have the no correct answer. I see. And uh, also, um, a final question from me is that, uh, would this uh, retraction, you know, like uh, dental probes be apl applicable to duodenum as well? Because uh, duodenum is usually very challenging, uh, even for experts. So uh, would that be possible to have some retraction in the duodenal side for duodenal ESD? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't write the duodenal ESD. <laughs> <laughs> so when, I, when, when, when I find the duodenal region, my first choice is the PCBR EMR. Because the you know the histology of the duodenal region is basically adenoma, yes. so I think the piecemeal resection is enough. Or pass to the surgeon to do the D rex or partial resection by the surgeon. It's much safer for the patient. I, I don't like the severe bleeding and the perforation causing the pancreatitis or something. So I would like to avoid the, such kind of the severe complication. Yes, fully agree that uh, duodenum is a really thin wall and also uh, exposed to um, very active enzyme in the mm. pancreas and the, and the bowel. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of time, uh, even if you have a good hemostasis and no perforation, that could be delay breathing uh, or even uh, perforation. Yes. Fully agree. Yes. yes. So I'd like to hand over to my co-chair, uh, Professor uh, Fujisuru, to continue. Yes. Can I make a question to Dr. Gotoda? My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I agree. Uh, Dr. Ono is a super expert, but I disagree that uh, Dr. Gotoda is normal endoscopist. <laughs> you are the experts. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, I understand the traction method and the scissors type knife are very useful for beginners. But uh, I think it is uh, necessary to clarify what are you know, the minimal requirement to perform ESD by using uh, these devices. What is your opinion? Okay. So you, you know that during the ESD, especially the gastric ESD, the most uh, difficult complication is breathing, severe breathing. So for the beginner or non-experienced doctor, uh, I would like to provide the rest breathing, uh, case with the rest breathing. Mm -hmm. So recently I would like to strongly propose to use the scissor type devices for non-experienced doctors like uh, beginners. Then uh, they will understand, when they will understand how to do the ESD and how to control the minor breathing or something. So maybe uh, I would like to ask them to use the other devices. So anyway, I believe the beginners should, should understand how to do the ESD and what kind of the complication should be controlled by endoscopy during uh, during the ESD. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, very, a very important point, I think. Actually, the, then uh, I move on to the uh, next speaker. Uh, uh, next speaker is uh, Dr. Hiroyuki Ono. He is a very uh, super expert of uh, ESD. I'd like to introduce him briefly. Uh, he graduated from the Sapporo Medical University in, in 
87, and he became a resident of National Cancer Center Hospital 1992 and promoted to the chief resident and medical staff. And then uh, from 2002, he become, became a chief of endoscopy and GI oncology division of Shizuoka Cancer Center. And from uh, 2012, uh, he became a uh, medical deputy director at uh, Shizuoka Cancer Center Hospital. He is also an honorary professor of Fudan University and uh, also a visiting professor of Nihon University. Uh, as all of you know, he is a father of ESD. Today's his talk is about uh, dangerous and reliable ESD for <laughs> someone. Please start your talk. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much for kind introduction. Professor Fujishiro, and uh, uh, nice to meet you, Professor Chu. And, <laughs> and thank you very much for good presentation, Dr. Gotoda. But, uh, and thank you, uh, I appreciate, really appreciate to have an opportunity, Professor Inoue. But anyway, uh, uh, I start my presentation, so I'll show you shimas. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, for, the, uh, for hearing my presentation, everyone. Uh, I'm Hiroyuki Ono from Shizuoka Cancer Center. As you know now, Professor Gotoda presented excellent and outstanding presentation titled Safe and Reliable ESD for Everyone. So I'd like to talk about dangerous and reliable ESD for someone. Why did I decide on such a title? Well, uh, a team of endoscopy of National Cancer Center Tokyo performed uh, first ESD using IT knife in the world in 1996. Uh, fortunately, I was a part of the, the IT knife development team at National Cancer Center Tokyo about uh, 25 years ago. Uh, Professor Gotoda and I were working together there. However, Compared to me, Professor Gotoda's career progressed rapidly. He has been dean of the School of Medicine, Nihon University. He has close to his ambition of becoming the godfather of Japanese endoscopy society. In honor, in, honor, in honor of him, I decided on the theme of my lecture. So well, I may decide to aim for laugh, but maybe a lame joke, sorry. So anyway, let's cool our head. This slide shows trends in the treatment of early and advanced gastric cancer in Japan. About, about 100,000 cases of gastric cancer are treated each year. Endoscopic treatment is increasing year by year. Since 2016, total number of endoscopic treatment has been higher than surgery. Endoscopic, so endoscopic treatment of gastric cancer is becoming more and more important. And this slide shows trends in the elderly population in Japan. As you know, the elderly, uh, elderly population is rapidly increasing. The number of people over 75 years old now account for 20% of the population. And this slide shows the five-year survival rate of patients with stage one, stage one gastric cancer who underwent surgical gastrectomy. It can be seen that about 20% of patients aged 75 years or older for men, and 80 years or older for women died of other diseases. According to the Japanese guidelines, lesions with a risk of lymph node metastasis greater than 1% are not indicated for ESD, but for surgical gastrectomy. However, considering the data of this slide, many endoscopists, include, including me, 
understand that in elderly patients, even with some risk of relief node metastasis, there could be one option of ESD instead of surgery. The cell in blue on the slide are the absolute indications for ESD. For these regions, safe and reliable ESD, which Professor Gotoda lectured should be performed. Uh, maybe these regions is good indication for scissors type knife, uh, like, uh, clutch, um, like clutch cutters, uh, SB knife. On the other hand, for the aforementioned reasons, I think the indications for dangerous and not so reliable ESD are for lesions in the cells in red, which are in the relative indication. Of course, dangerous ESD doesn't mean I should do reckless and reckless ESD. As you know, this dangerous means challenge. Now I'd like to show some cases, dangerous and reliable ESD for some of them. As for cases in relative indications, sometimes tumor invades submucosal layer. So I have to dissect deep submucosal layer or deeper. For such cases, we developed endoscopic selective muscular dissection, ESMD. This technique removes the upper layers of the proper mask. The patient, an 81 year old man, had the lesion on the posterior wall of upper gastric body that was clearly suspicious of SM invasion. We explained to him that the standard treatment was surgical resection and he met with the surgeon, but he refused gastrectomy and insisted on endoscopic resection. Therefore, I decided to try endoscopic treatment for local control of cancer using endoscopic selective muscular dissection technique. You can see the muscle layer in the lower half of the screen and the specimen in the upper half. By peeling off the, the upper layers of the mass layer, we can see that the muscle layer is attached to the specimen like this. You can see now. And, uh, and I dissect the upper of the uh, upper layer of the muscle, muscle layers of oh, uh, ESD completed. Although cancer invaded some of the layer massively, horizontal and, and vertical margin were cancer negative. As shown in the lower part, proper muscle layer was stained by desmin and the cancer was extensively in contact with the muscle layer. But I rejected to include the upper layer of the muscle layer. Uh, so, uh, so I was uh, able to make the margin negative. And using the EQA system, which is a tool of prediction of lymph node metastasis, this case has a total of six points one point for SM, three points for LY, one point for V, and one point for tumor diameter, which means that the risk of lymph node metastasis is up to about 40%. Now that we can tell patients about the high risk based on data, we believe that we can return to the starting point where patients and doctors can discuss treatment decisions together. And next case. The patient was 87 year old. As shown in this slide, the cancer was estimated at 0 to C, uh, 25 millimeter, uh, clinically N0 by computed tomography. It was also estimated tumor invaded only some mucosal layer and didn't reach the muscle layer by EUS. Finally, I decided to try ESD using ESMD technique. After circumferential incision, 
I try to dissect the upper part of muscle, muscle layer like this. So you can see the muscle layer here. However, in this part, I made a deep cut with IT knife. You can see the fatty tissue of the less momentum. Did the perforation occur? Anyway, I decided to further exfoliate the appropriate layer on the proximal side of this one. Well, how about this? Perforation or not? You can see the transparent membrane here. This is Zerosa. From the definition of perforation in textbooks, this is not perforation. Uh, Chairman, Dr. Professor Fujishiro, this is, is this agree? Do you agree? Agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I think considering his eight, seven year old age, endoscopic treatment is one good option. And uh, I, uh, uh, I'd like to show you a one safe and reliable ESD for everyone. Patient with uh, 57, 57 year old female. The lesion was located on gastric fungus and rel relatively large, about 80 millimeter in size. Clinical diagnosis was T1 tumor, so it was absolute indication for ESD. After circumferential incision, I started to dissect some of the layer. For such a lesion located on fundus and the with dental floss uh, is very useful. Professor Gotoda kindly taught me uh, to use uh, clip with dental floss. Dental floss is very useful. I think it was too difficult to complete ESD without end with dental floss. To prove by this, I, could, I got good vision of dissecting area like this. Now you can see So I am able to continue to dissect in good vision. So I could complete ESD. And time was about 70, 70, 70 minutes. Uh, and next similar cases, but this, uh, this case is not so reliable. Patient was 86 years old male. The lesion was located on gastric fundus, similar location to previous case. Clinical diagnosis was T1B, SM invasive tumor, but he was a high age, so uh, I finally I decided to do to try ESD. I studied ESD in the same way as the previous case and put the uh, clip with dental floss. ESD was working well at first. You can see some of the layers stained blue. However, as I approached the center of the lesion, color of some of the layer changed to white. I suspected it meant severe fibrotic change or cancer invasion. So it was a little bit hard to dissect. Finally, perforation occurred. You can see diaphragm and liver. The perforation hole was too big to suit a, a user endoclips. I used OTSC like this. And the remaining area, uh, I, I use I used OTSC again. and fill the gaps with PGA sheet. OTC suturing and PGA sheet filling were successful. The patient took food from five days after ESD and was discharged nine hospital days. However, surprisingly, cancer invaded the cellosa. This lesion was advanced cancer I recommended to receive surgery, but he refused. 
I should choose surgical gastrectomy or no treatment for such patient uh, before deciding uh, treatment. We, and we know we do not overdose. Fortunately, there are no recurrent subtuna. So this is my last slide. Take home message, do not overdo. Of course, I usually follow the guidelines to determine the indications. However, sometimes challenging ESD is reliable, especially for elderly patients. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ono. Very wonderful and challenging uh, ESD. Uh, showing us the very wonderful de results of your uh, uh, techniques. Actually, uh, as he, uh, uh, Dr. Ono mentioned, uh, recently the, our society is very aging. So uh, uh, J Japanese Gastric Cancer Association made a decision to make a relative indication of a gastric ESD. And then uh, when we check the histology after ESD, the, we can uh, decide uh, how to perform uh, additional treatment or follow up something. Actually, the, uh, he mentioned that uh, uh, he make a very uh, uh, important technique to cut uh, in the middle of muscle and then to uh, make a uh, vertical margin negative uh, resection of the submucosa invasive uh, gastric cancer. Uh, actually, can thank I- you for, Thank you for summarizing my presentation, <laughs> Professor <laughs> yeah. Actually, very nice uh, presentation. Uh, can I ask one question? No. <laughs> No, okay. no. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, uh, you performed a very nice technique to cut in the middle of muscle. Uh, uh, it, actually, the, is it possible uh, by using a needle type knife or the scissors type knife? Uh, is it only available by using the IT knife? What is your opinion? Mm, maybe it is only available to use IT knife. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's, it's a kidding. So maybe uh, all devices can, can do. Mm -hmm. But IT knife is very uh, useful to cut uh, uh, up in the parallel way. So yeah. maybe uh, it's a safer uh, uh, cutting in the middle of mass to be available uh, in comparison with, with other devices. I think so, but uh, Professor Fujishiro used a, a bit hero knife. Uh, <laughs> yeah. how, how do you think? Uh, I think it's splash with the hero knife. Uh, splash with the hero knife is not so good knife. So uh, actually, the, I like uh, more uh, suitable knife to cut, uh, such as IT knife to cut in the middle of muscle layer. Yeah. So maybe I it think, is. Yes. Yeah, so uh, sometimes maybe the needle time is uh, very uh, cutting ability is uh, greater than IT knife. So. Easily, cut, uh, easily uh, go to uh, Seroza or uh, easy to do uh, perforation. So I think I think uh, uh, IT knife is uh, relatively uh, better uh, than another devices. But maybe uh, all devices can do. Okay, and um, uh, you showed uh, not a perforated case, but just exposure of sub uh in your presentation. Uh, after that, then uh, you know the. Uh, it may uh, is it necessary to close a, a, a mass defect or no need to close a mass defect? What's your opinion mm. at this situation? Uh, uh, in my in my cases, I uh, performed uh, to close uh, by clips. Uh, mm. Maybe uh, in the lesser lesser curvature of the stomach. Uh, the momentum is uh, contact to the uh, gastric wall, so maybe it is. Uh, it might be not necessary, but uh, clo uh, closure closure by endoclip is not so difficult technique. So uh, I think the perforation or suspected perforated cases, uh, I should uh, I should use a cross. Uh, mm -hmm. I should I should cr uh, cross the whole uh, the uh, suspected area. Mm. Thank you very much. 
actually there this is not uh, uh, you know the uh, good case for beginner to perform the ESG, but uh, you know the uh, professor Dr. Ono is very uh, good technique to perform the ESG, so the, he can cut in the middle of mass layer. Sometimes make such a, a mass defect, but uh, anyway he can control these. Uh, you know, not complication, but this this uh, difficult situation, uh, not to make a patient uh, to uh, worse condition after endoscopic resection. But uh, I find out uh, this kind of uh, development uh, to a challenge uh, the uh, go to the next step uh, be very important point, and then uh, we can perform more. Uh, uh, cases of ESD uh, uh, in the future. I think standard, I think standard, uh, standard uh, technique and the standard uh, follow the standard indication is most important. And, <laughs> and, to, and to do breakthrough, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes cha uh, challenging challenges necessary. Uh, I myself is very conservative, conservative recently, but uh, I learned a lot. Uh, uh, we should do something more uh, to make a breakthrough uh, in this field. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. <laughs> uh, Faith, you do you have much. some comments? Uh, yeah, uh, Mitsuhiro, I fully agree with you and uh, that, uh, well, the topic is uh, dangerous and reliable and I'm really convinced that uh, sometimes we need the challenge uh, and uh, we need a pioneer like uh, Professor Ono and Professor Gotota to show us the way and uh, how we can tackle all this dangerous but reliable ESD. And uh, that uh, challenging this uh, will actually go to the next step. For example, now we are also doing full fitness resection for GIS. So that is uh, also, you know, learning from how you manage all this uh, 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 kind of uh, big uh, resection full fingers uh, during the ESD as well. So congratulations to all this success. So can, 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 I ask the, can I ask? Yes, of course. Okay, I have the two questions, one for Dr. Ono and uh, another one for the fit. And yes. uh, I'm a little bit wondering the tumor cell dissemination when we uh, make the big perforation, especially for the tumor embedding into the deep muscle layer or SE. So uh, from the surgeon's point of view, how do you think about the tumor dissemination when we encounter such kind of the big perforation, Philip? Uh, that's, yeah. huh? I, I'd like to ask to the Philip from the surgeon's <laughs> point of view. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, that uh, we always worry about uh, tumor seeding um, mm. during the procedure, especially when we open up the, the peritoneum. So I think that what uh, uh, Dr. Ondo demonstrated is that uh, I can see he actually tried not to perforate and or he actually in a very controlled manner, just at the point where you have to perforate, then you perforate. So that will minimize the tumor seeding. And the secondly, there's also you know, uh, previous uh, evidence uh, demonstrating that even with the perforation after ESD, I think from Japanese data, there's no increase in terms of uh, tumor spillage uh, mm -hmm. and or follow-up and uh, you know, uh, assessment for the patient. Mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, probably um, the tumor seeding or tumor uh, you know, um, spreading uh, will not be uh, greatly um, you know, uh, uh, enhanced by this uh, perforation or the uh, resection. Okay, better. thank you very much. So the situation is a little bit different from the colon. Yes, maybe, so, maybe. Mm, mm. So another question for Dr. Ono. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask the, how about the duodenal ESD? What, because of free pass to me. You, uh, you, you, you like the duodenal ESD or? Select, choose the PSB VMR or something. Uh, um, initially, I uh, I tried to do ESD all cases, but uh, recently, uh, small small lesions uh, I do a uh, underwater EMR. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but I think the uh, lesions uh, which shows uh, malignant findings such as uh, uh, depression was. 
some, something like that. In such cases, I, I think the piecemeal rejection is not so uh, not so good. So in such in such case for such cases, I I should do uh, unblock rejection. I should do the unblock rejection. So I choose ESD. So some cases uh, uh, ESD is necessary. I think. So how, how about the adenoma region? 3 cm in diameter and the no endoscopic finding for the some uh, cancer. So, piecemeal or EMR, ESD? Yeah, mm, piecemeal is okay, but I choose uh, ESD. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for, my, for my progression skill. In thank you. ESD skill. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, the, we learned a lot from both professors about uh, gastric ESD, and um, uh, I'm very happy to have a chance to make uh, a chair with uh, Philip uh, in this session. I'd like to thank to the uh, Professor uh, Haru Inoue uh, Tokyo Live uh, 2021 to making the, this kind of opportunity for us. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.